Hi there, Waltoners. I'm Jack, and this is DSMY Newscast. And today, we're going to be talking all about the major revamp that's currently underway and under construction for Test Track at Epcot. As you see, recently, there's been quite a bit of activity on this project as it's heading towards its official reopening next year in 2025. But to do this construction update today, I want to do something a little bit different, and that's actually bring in somebody to help with this video, who has quite a bit of experience covering all the latest Disney Park construction from on the ground in the Disney Parks themselves. And so I'd like to introduce you all to Drew Smith, who you might be familiar with for all of his fantastic construction updates that he posts over on social media for the Disney Parks. But today, Drew's going to take you through the latest in terms of construction on Test Track and all new details. And so with that being said, it's over to you, Drew. Thanks, Jack. Hey there, Waltoneers. I am Drew, and today I'm on the ground here at Epcot. As recently, there has been major construction progress on the next iteration of Test Track, as well as Disney sharing all new details on what we will be experiencing when the attraction reopens next year. We've got a lot to talk about today, so let's get to it. I want to start with a quick refresher on this project because coming out of D23 in August, there has been so much news for Walt Disney World and Disney Parks worldwide that everything happening with Test Track has flown quietly under the radar. It was first announced at Destination D23 last September. It was one of the biggest updates for Walt Disney World at the time, which sounds crazy to say now, but all we knew at the time was that General Motors and Chevrolet was once again going to be funding, primarily funding, this transformation from Test Track 2.0 to Test Track 3.0. We got an early piece of concept art where a vehicle was moving through a more naturist outdoor scene, and this is also where Disney first talked about that this next iteration of Test Track is going to be pulling inspiration from the original World of Motion attraction. World of Motion was the first attraction housed where Test Track is located today. So for over 40 years now, General Motors has funded this pavilion from the first attraction, World of Motion, taking you through the invention of the wheel and how people moved around the world to where vehicles are and technology is today, leading us to now with this next iteration of Test Track. And I'm about to jump on the Epcot monorail to get all of this construction for you guys, and then we'll dive into those details. All right, I just got off the Epcot monorail, and now I'm on the ground here in Epcot. And I've got to say, since the construction started on Test Track 3.0 back on June 17th, that is the most activity that I have seen on the project site, from dirt moving to the project team, the Imagineers working on the project on site. That is a very good sign, but it directly lines up with what we will be talking about today. So, so far with this next iteration of Test Track, the most major milestone that we have seen so far is the removal of that just flat out ugly canopy that was installed all the way back for the first version of Test Track 25 plus years ago. And the awesome thing is that the new canopy that they will start working on soon is actually going to be a direct extension of the original World of Motion Pavilion. It has the exact same design motif, which is a major win. And something that I've noticed personally is that design not only is World of Motion inspired, but it actually lines up with what we've seen over at Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. So Disney is bringing that cohesion together for the attractions in World Discovery, which I think is awesome. But so far, that's the most major milestone we've seen. And on the ground, the original World of Motion Pavilion looks beautiful. Now we are actually seeing, and I just saw this for the first time today, that new canopy, they actually have already poured the first support pillar for that new canopy. So that also lines up with how fast work is moving. Very good sign. In addition to everything happening out front, back here behind me, this is actually the main construction door and the access point where all of the contractors and Walt Disney Imagineering took out all of the old set pieces and where all of the brand new set pieces are going to be moved in. They've got scaffolding over there. All of the new stuff is moving inside. Well, we can see everything happening on the outside. What's happening in this building back here? And that's where permits come in handy because it gives us that rare inside look as to what is happening, even if Disney hasn't confirmed it yet. There has been a lot of permits filed, and all these companies that Walt Disney Imagineering is working with right now, the quality of work that they do is very, very good. The first one that stands out to me is Icarus Exhibits. Icarus Exhibits has worked with Walt Disney Imagineering for a very long time. They are right down the road here from Walt Disney World, from the characters over in Toy Story Land. You know, when you're walking into Toy Story Land, you see Woody and Buzz, those are their figures and like the detail, the attention to detail on those figures is so good. And then you just go right next door over to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, you know, the pod racers, the vehicles, those were also done by Icarus Exhibits. So when I look at Icarus working on the next iteration of Test Track, 
it's a complete 180 from what we had before and it leads me to believe that these new set pieces that they are installing right now the permits say installation of set pieces that is a very good sign for this next iteration of test track now the other company that also stands out to me working alongside Walt Disney Imagineering is Spitz Inc. Spitz Inc. is a company that specializes in planetariums, domes, space-esque technology. And what's cool is that Spitz Inc. actually did the Galaxarium over next door at Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. So we've already seen Imagineering use this company for the Galaxarium, the first thing you see in the queue for Cosmic Rewind. So when I see them working on Test Track, that also stands out to me. It is a quality, product much better than what we had before everything with test track 2.0 the set pieces were, were very flat uninspired inexpensive black paint tron-esque it was okay for its time back in 2012 but it was long overdue so perfect time for test track 3.0 so this is where we take the permits and then connect them to the all new details which disney revealed back at d23 in august everyone is talking about this attraction reopening in 2025 but no one's talking about the official new details that Disney just revealed. What is happening behind me right now as I talk to all of you? But stop me if you've heard this before, right? Disney is saying that the queue is going to feature six distinct exhibits and that the new show scenes that are going to be added are going to showcase onboard personalization, technology, customization, all that, right? What does that sound similar to? None other than Test Track 2.0, which just closed. So this does make sense in a sense because General Motors and Chevrolet is obviously going to want to promote their current and new technology with this next iteration of Test Track, but how much of this next iteration is actually going to be inspired by World of Motion, like Disney is saying? When they're talking about moving technology forward and the people working on that technology, to me that seems like Test Track 2.0, but in a modern era with 2024 and 2025 technology, right? Who knows, maybe that world of motion inspiration could be as simple as that new canopy, you know, basically extending that original design motif all the way back from 1982. I just want to set that realistic expectation when I'm looking at these official details, you know, don't get your hopes too high if you're an Epcot fan and you want that world of motion inspiration, because to me, it just seems like a modern version of Test Track 2.0. One thing that Jack and I hope does come back in some way shape or form is it's fun to be free it's fun to be free this is such a good song and it unfortunately went away with the closure of world of motion for test track now at the time of this recording jack and i as well as insiders on the ww magic forums have heard that at least as of now it's fun to be free is not going to return on the attraction itself which is very unfortunate there's really no better time to bring back it's fun to be free then when you're talking about world of motion inspiration right and something that we hope they do is bring it back but they could also bring it back in a way that makes sense to when it was first here back in the 80s right what if you had a vintage radio show in the load station or when you're coming back into the load station with a vintage radio announcer and it's fun to be free plays or in the queue in one of those exhibits have it's fun to be free playing there's no excuse not to bring back It's Fun To Be Free. Another hope for this project is the enclosure of the outdoor track because that would be a massive attendance boost for Epcot, right? When there's lightning in the area in Florida, Test Track cannot operate. So if Disney were to invest the money into enclosing the outdoor track, that would not only allow Imagineering to create a new show scene with show lighting, make it a scene on its own, it would increase Epcot's attendance. Now, unfortunately, we do not expect this to be on the table for the project anymore, whereas at one point it was. But hopefully someday it does happen. So when in 2025 is Test Track opening? So with the permits, all of those permits from the ones filed back in June to the ones that are being filed now, they have a standard one year expiration date, which is sometime in summer of 2025. And sometimes Disney can extend permits if a project's timeline allows it to. But the good news is that even the permits being filed right now are still expiring in summer of 2025. So that is a good sign that Walt Disney Imagineering wants this next iteration of Test Track open in summer of 2025. The elephant in the room here that everyone is excited about is Universal Epic Universe, right? Also opening in 2025, likely to be summer of 2025. So will Disney want to open Test Track in summer of 2025 for Universal Epic Universe, as well as what's happening here at Walt Disney World, right? We have the brand new Disney villain show 
at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Also in summer 2025, we have Disney Starlight. We're gonna get nighttime parade, guys. That's summer 2025 at Magic Kingdom. So between that, the permits expiring in summer, Universal Epic Universe likely going to be summer, and also the fact that the timeline from Test Track 1.0 to Test Track 2.0 was only six months. So if they took a year for this next version, because it's going to be more elaborate with better detailed quality show scenes, then a year would line up. Summer 2025, that seems most likely at the time of this recording for Test Track 3.0. That's it for me on the ground here at Epcot. Thanks for sticking with me through this one. All right, Jack, you can take it from here. Thanks for that, Drew. That was a really fantastic update there. But now, as always, it's over to you, the Waltoneers, as I would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions on this new version of Test Track that's going to be opening next year, Test Track 3.0. And what would you like to see in terms of that world of motion inspiration that's supposedly going to be within this attraction? What would you like to see in terms of the show scenes within the attraction? And how would you like to see it different from Test Track 2.0 to Test Track 3.0? And of course, if you've enjoyed this video for today, be sure to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell. And go ahead and give Drew a follow over on social media. I'll leave links down below to all of his social media links as well. And I'd also like to say a massive thank you to the official Waltoneer Club over on Patreon for always supporting this channel. And also a massive shout out to the official Waltoneer Gold members that you can see here on the screen, along with official Waltoneer Diamond members, Kyle Mahan, Justin Tupper, and JC Russell. And so with that being said for today, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon. Okay.